Hi, I'm Joey Pickavance with joeypickavance.com. We're going to watch Cole here hit a golf shot. He's got an 8-iron in his hand. I'm going to ask him at the start of a session here today, just take your full 8-iron shot, show me what it looks like here. So let's see what he does. Okay, a little chunky, but... Here's one of the things I want to, to let you all know. One of the most common flaws I see in a golf swing is, is, is players take the club too far back. Now they do it for a myriad of reasons from, from technical skills that they have, but more often than not, it's just because there's this false illusion that says if I take the arms, hands, and club farther back, then I'm going to generate more power. Now what I'm going to do is show you what I would do with a player using coal to help shorten and tighten up that stroke. Now I know those are words, shorten and tighten it up, but technically what I'm really trying to do is get him better synchronized so that his arms don't run off his pivot. I want his arms and pivot better synced. That's going to make it more efficient. The difficulty for a student learning this is that they're simply going to hit the ball almost as far, swinging easier. I know that doesn't compute, but that's my job to make the student stick with it. So I'm going to say, okay, Cole, let's go ahead and take a setup. And I always like to tee up a ball nice and short. Uh, I put the ball on a short peg just like they would for a par three. Now what I'm going to ask him to do is just take his left arm parallel to the ground. Just do a backswing. Okay, good. So let's do that again. He's going to take it back, left arm parallel to the ground. Now as he does this, I'm going to make sure that he keeps his right arm in a down position. Now, I didn't say cramped into his body. It might sense more towards his body, but I'm just looking for his right arm to be folded pointing down. Okay, now let's do that one more time, Cole, on your own. Rotate to that position and hold. Great. Now just go ahead and turn through a ball from there. Nice and easy. Just hit about 80 yards. Great. Now, it's not even close to 80 yards. That ball's out there about 125. Just goes to show you how efficient the correct technique really can be. So I'm going to have Cole do that again, and I'm just going to remind him, let's get it right here to where the left arm is parallel to the ground. Now he does a real good job of getting his wrist cocked and set. Okay, so let's do that again. Turn to there and rotate through short. Very good, very good. Now, now I'm going to get him to my desired top position for an 8-iron. I don't think this is a club we should be swinging full and hard at. This is, a, this is a scoring club. This is a club he should be knocking 10, 12, 15 feet. Let's come back a little further. Good. So I'm going to start to get him into about this 10 o'clock position. I think 11 o'clock would be where his driver is, but with a shorter iron like this, 10 o'clock. Let's do that again. Get it back to 10 o'clock, Cole. Excellent. Now go ahead and get it to 10 o'clock and move your arms and turn your pivot together. There we go. Now there we go with an 8 iron right at about 155. If he turns faster, he can create more speed, but not by going back farther. That's the challenge for all players. So there's a good illustration that we need to shorten and tighten up those scoring irons to make them much more accurate.